How have things changed with people's mental health? Nationally, even globally, so many people are now isolated and in their homes. They're not able to get out and socialize with other people. And most of us, like most human beings, we need a connection with other humans, even if they are introverts, for example. It's been hard for them. And as a result, so many of us have been so depressed. In the life of a college student, many of them feel isolated, even though most of them live in dorms and residence halls with other people, but are sadly still in their own bedrooms. Which, ironically, many of them get excited and happy, thinking, yeah, I'm about to go mingle. However, they can't. Or if they do, they have to wear masks and social distance. It's so hard to handle. And we've seen the increase of depression and suicides, and this has been happening internationally. There's just so many people. I never really had friends that grew deep into depression, besides one friend who at the beginning of the pandemic, it was really hard for her. She started feeling better though, since she would come over and of course we would safely sit down on her front porch or the grass, so it was easier. For me personally, I have my child. It's easier even just a little bit when you live with someone and I do try my best to go out I'm an introvert, so you can say it's a lot easier for me. I do miss some things, like I miss going out a lot more. I sometimes just say I'm stuck of being tired here. But I don't have the same overwhelming amount of depression like others. Like I said, I'm an introvert after all, so it's better for me in some cases. I remember going out to parties and concerts and other music events, and most importantly of all, seeing family members. I miss it all so much. Especially in the past few years, the hardest for me is acknowledging all those who have passed, especially people of color or poor people who are pushing through the pandemic and or they may have not actually died from COVID, but not able to have a proper burial or a funeral at all. I've lost friends, family, I lost people I've worked with. It was incredibly hard for mourning since I haven't seen them for so long. My father lost a sister and we couldn't see her since he was all the way in California. So she passed before we had a good time to catch up. Cause well, we can't go see them come this. That probably hurts the most for me. So I'm sure it's hard for those who have to deal with that and maybe even worse. It's not depression from isolation, but it's also from mourning and acknowledging those who have died during this time. With my family, my grandmother passed just a year before COVID. So it's been harder and we were planning gathering, but then all of this hit. And now we just have to wait it off like everyone else around the world. Yeah, as I recall, I hung out with the same people that I did in middle school. There were two middle schools that sort of combined into the high school, and I knew most of the people who went to the middle school. Most kids from the middle school at Carlisle came to CCHS as well, and I'd say I probably... I had one really good friend I had stayed in touch with throughout middle school, and then hung out with them a lot. I knew about 
80 kids from middle school. So I knew a bunch of the kids from the middle school I was in. I definitely started meeting a lot of new people that that first year of high school. And then I also went to Thoreau in fifth grade. And so I had a number of friends that I knew from Thoreau who went to CC. I moved from a middle school. I went to Carlisle Public School. So I knew a good number of people going into high school. I'd say there were probably like 30 to 40 other kids. We were the smaller of the two middle schools. And then I think maybe sophomore year started hanging out with like one friend from middle school, but then like four people from the other middle school. So it was sort of a new friend group. But so I'm trying to think. I knew of all of them from Throw that I knew were going to be at CC. Like, we knew each other, but, like, I wouldn't say we were, like, yeah, we were acquaintances. I knew another whole group of friends and started hanging out with them as well from Throw. It was a different group. And then senior year, I met a couple people because I was friends with, like, you know, but, but yeah. Gosh, well, so my dad had a problem drinking. He tried to get sober once and it didn't happen. So he went to a rehab hospital and then the second time it worked. And I'm just trying to figure out what the timing was and when this like, yeah, so this all happened in middle school. And then also this involved going to a family week or a week of therapy where we all talk about the problem and how it's challenging or impacted you. So there I didn't, actually, if I think about it, it was really helpful. I ended up getting a lot of the stuff off of my chest that I would have been angry about or resenting. Like me as a kid, I was just sort of feeling like all of my friends were looking at middle school a little differently than I might have been. So it was just, yeah, anyway, I don't know. And then how that's and that kind of stuff is related to high school is like when something like that is going on in your life, everything that's going on around you is just sort of like, it colors anything. Like, for a week at high school, I remember freshman year wanting to try out for the soccer team. But they were just crazy. There were, like, 50 kids trying out for only, like, two positions. So, yeah, so. And, like, stuff like that, you know, I just... I didn't even end up trying out because I knew that I was not one of the better players. <laughs> also, none of... They didn't have a freshman team, only a JV team. And so they said that they were going to take probably like two or three kids out of the 50 who were trying out or tried out, which was all that sort of stuff. You know, I think it's just crazy. So, but anyways, and like the transition, like the homework load from middle school to high school, I think was not different for me let me think yeah that that kind of thing with the homework I didn't I wasn't looking for the answer I just was like figuring it out you know but right so corona for you sort of like to sit around and not do stuff I don't know with friends that's probably difficult to manage. Like, I never had to manage that in doing sports like the ski team or baseball. And then so finding, like, a table to sit with friends and being able to, like, go home and do homework, especially with them, like, that can be, I don't know, yeah. But, like, one of those things where not really related, so. One of, like... There were a couple things I was managing that were kind of like the case that I wanted to buy school lunch, but didn't really know how to do that yet and kind of had to learn how to do that in the lunchroom somewhere. 
and because the freshmen was spread out in different lunch blocks which had something just sort of like I think too bad and then just like my time with that and homework and stuff and baseball had a lot of cello stuff that was going on in the spring and so had to miss a lot of practices for cello rehearsals which so because that was my time with priorities and cello schoolwork practices with my ski team and then like baseball team that year and in those years why b is my best friend he was born in lowell but moved to tuxbury during middle school my friend YB is Asian, Asian and black. It's 2020 now, now, but the remnants of that dumpster fire 2020 still remain, and YB is still being blamed for the pandemic because people assume he is Chinese. My friend is of Cambodian descent. He's not from China. He's from America. My friend is also afraid of the cops will come after him. No, not because of the stash of weed we have in the car. No, he's afraid because he knows that because he's black, he will be shot dead. I still remember coming home from the gym one afternoon with YB. All of a sudden, he ducks under the seat. At first, I just thought he was acting stupid because he was high. But when I asked him what was wrong, he told me about how he doesn't like cops and how he's afraid the cops will shoot him. I was at a loss of words. I never really understood the whole situation as a white person. But it seemed pretty scary. I really didn't have any words at all. It just really, it really bothers me not seeing my best friend. Not well, seeing my best friend in so much danger. It's seeming so vulnerable. You know how a situation almost happens and you start to think about what would you would have done if that situation had actually happened? Because that's what happened to me. I wondered, what should I do if he gets killed? I mean, I can't call 911. So is he supposed to just die there? It's really hard to think about. And I also think about what if I was Ivy? Why be? How would I react? What would I do? What should I do? For the most part, I feel like I had a pretty normal childhood. I mean, my family was a bunch of uptight Catholic immigrants, and sometimes we pronounced things wrong. Yeah, I had a few odd relatives. I mean, every family's like that. I remember my aunt, Aunt Binny. She was, or is, bipolar. Manic depressive at the time she was diagnosed. She did all kinds of crazy shit. I mean, she's crazy. Throwing silverware across the table. I, don't, I still don't know to this day if she was purposely trying to hit my mother or if she actually thought she was setting the table. We were at my grandparents' house for some birthday and we were all getting dinner ready. I was going around placing napkins around the table and my aunt grabs spoons and throws them the length of the table. Not at my mother, but something was going on. I didn't always know she was there because I was fairly young. My grandmother lived in East Boston in a three-decker. She lived on the bottom floor and Aunt Benny lived on top floor with her family. My Nana had a bank account that was for the house and my Nana noticed that my aunt had taken some money out of the account. Now, I don't know if she drained the account or what, but there was a big chunk of money missing and a whole hubbub about it. I don't know if the money ever got replaced. 
my family didn't move to North Reading yet, so I was maybe eight, but that's when I knew she wasn't all there. And yeah, some days were better than others. I mean, you definitely could tell when she was off her meds. Somewhere in her mid-30s, she became obsessed with the Virgin Mary. Something happened, it was because of the Virgin. We were at my grandmother's house one day, and she had this cabinet. It was recessed into the wall, built into the wall. And Aunt Benny's tearing apart the cabinet, throwing plates, throwing stuff on the table. And I came up to her and I asked her, well, what are you looking for? And she said, the Virgin, she's here. Can you smell them roses, flowers, the Virgin? After about an hour of the Virgin, my father and I left. She didn't like my father. I, we don't know when or why it started. When my mother came on the scene is when the three siblings started to split apart because my mother was on the scene. I don't quite get it, but that's okay. Eventually, she stopped talking to my side of the family altogether. She blamed my father for the death of their parents because he put them in a nursing home. She also ransacked my grandparents' house looking for money after they died. I mean, I know her family didn't grow up with much, but why would someone even think to do that? And she holds a grudge. My grandparents died when I was about in college. And when I got married, so about 20 years later, she's still trying to shun us out of her life. She scheduled her daughter's wedding the day before mine. And if someone was going to my wedding, they couldn't go to Doreen's wedding. I planned my wedding in eight months. She planned theirs in three. It was complete spite, craziness. I, she's absolutely nuts. Probably shouldn't say that. I guess she probably cares. Just doesn't know how to be, like, normal. I had this really cool job in college. I was traveling around the United States for a finance company. Teaching them how to put in their brand new computers and work their new computer system. Training people. I said goodbye to my parents, my grandparents, a few other relatives were there, but I didn't think much of it. I'd be back for holidays and anything else that was important. Now, she knew I was down at my grandparents' house, saying, you know, goodbye. She called and said, you know, I really do love you. Well, I love you too, Aunt Benny. Thank you. So, I remember I told my mom about the phone call. And she said, the sad thing is, she probably really does love you. She just isn't in control of whatever's going on. I just, I will, I will always remember that.